And welcome back to Vision Miner 3D Printing News. This week we've got all kinds of crazy stuff from the 3D system stock skyrocketing to EOS giving a million bucks to college students. We've got a morphing nozzle, uh, more shoes from Adidas, and titanium aircraft parts with Velo 3D. It's gonna be a good one, let's get right into it. Okay, on January 7th, 2021, 3D Systems announced the sale of its non-core software businesses, sending the stock soaring to over twice its previous value. The company actually sold its Symmetron and Gibbs Cam software businesses to a subsidiary of ST Acquisition Co. for cash proceeds of about $64 million. The company was also able to use a portion of those proceeds to pay off a $21 million debt, making them debt free. It also ended the at the market equity program, which means that they do not have to sell more stock and dilute existing shareholders. So far, their new president and CEO, Jeffrey Graves, is delivering on his goal of getting the company out of debt and refocusing on core businesses. Now this also included the sale of their Australian facility, which was the largest digital manufacturing service bureau in the Asia Pacific region, and they sold that to GoProto back in December. Meanwhile, EOS is just throwing money at college students. This leading 3D printer manufacturer has announced its ongoing support for the Texas Rocket Engineering Lab, or TREL, at the University of Texas. The Collegiate Rocket Lab was initially established back in 2018 via an anonymous donation of a million dollars. And they've since been providing Texas students with hands-on aerospace engineering, project management, and business experience. Now, EOS is providing the resources TREL needs to continue its operations, which includes the 3D printing of advanced aerospace components for a student design challenge. EOS is offering to help 3D print mission-critical parts to the Halcyon rocket, being developed by TREL. Uh, now, this 28-foot-tall rocket will fly to the edge of Space as part of the Base 11 Space Challenge, which is an international design competition pitting student engineering teams against each other in a bid to launch a single stage rocket to the Karman Line, an altitude of 100 kilometers. As EOS has no doubt realized, student design challenges are an excellent way to foster engagement and build technical skills in 3D printing, and they're definitely not the only ones doing it. Meanwhile, in the medical field, we've got a team of doctors at Galilee Medical Center for oral and maxillofacial surgery, recently performing a repair of a fracture on the floor of an eye socket using augmented reality and 3D printing. The patient received a 3D printed titanium plate based on a 3D model built from scanned CT data of the injured left socket area. The scan was actually an inverted version of the patient's healthy right socket, and uh, they projected it onto the injured left socket area with 3D software in augmented reality, and then to position the 3D printed titanium plate correctly, one doctor actually used the Microsoft HoloLens uh, mixed reality glasses to overlay the 3D model of the titanium implant into position under the patient's left eye socket. And after just 90 minutes, the surgery was over, and within a few days, the patient was released from the hospital. Following the recovery of several days, the patient was released home and the patient's follow-up CT scans revealed that the 3D printed titanium plate implantation was successfully placed without any complications. Very, very cool stuff, I'll say. Oh, hey, if nothing else, that's worth a smash on the like button. And if you want more, hit subscribe too. It helps us out with the infamous social media algorithms and we appreciate it. Next, we've got 3D printed insoles designed to absorb sweat to power your electronics. <laughs> That's great times. Uh, basically, researchers from the National University of Singapore created a novel film that can evaporate sweat six times faster and use the harvested moisture to power wearable electronic devices. Yeah, if you got a problem with sweaty feet and sweaty shoes, Definitely check this one out. <laughs> anyway, while the final shoes won't actually be 3D printed, this is a great example of using 3D printing to embed electronics, and it points to the future of 3D printed prototyping as well as wearables. Speaking of uh, wearables and shoes, Adidas has just released a new version of the 4D Fusio model, which confirms that 3D printed midsoles are here to stay, and they're getting more and more colorful. Uh, the price points for some of the models have dropped below $150, and new models keep coming out, such as the new multicolored 4D Fusio. Uh, 
And with all the new technologies coming into the segment of wearables and shoes, I'm definitely excited to get myself a pair, uh, maybe of one of the old ones, because I like that green, you know, I don't know, something about it. Anyway, the, the 4D Fusio is a lightweight running sneaker with the upper made from prime knit technology. Uh, and well, they've already offered white and black colored midsoles, Aside from the green that we saw originally, the 40 Fusio actually presents a mix of colors, with the white tip gradually changing to an entirely new bright orange color. Uh, so definitely keep an eye out at AMOG 2021 in Florida for people wearing these puppies. Uh, I think they will they should be out by then, if you can even get a pair. So while we're on the topic of carbon machines, can't help but mention that they've actually appointed a new chief revenue officer, Deborah Rogers. A GE additive, Rogers was responsible for all commercial processes, commercial excellence, sales force effectiveness, marketing, and communications, while previously filling similar roles at Paradata and Flextronics. Great to see the expansion and change, and we can't wait to see what she does for the industry. Next, we've got a morphing 3D printer nozzle developed for carbon fiber. Now, researchers over at the University of Maryland have developed a shape-changing 3D printer nozzle meant to tackle a particular method for 3D printing fiber composites. The nozzle is actually able to morph in such a way that it can change the orientation of short fibers in materials like carbon fiber nylon or glass fiber in order to improve the characteristics such as strength or electrical conductivity. The nozzle is actually made up of flexible bladders that are inflated pneumatically, which then change the shape of the nozzle from a straight channel to a converging, diverging geometry, uh, which then obviously alters the orientation of the fibers as they're coming out of the nozzle. Ironically, the Stratasys Polyjet machine was used to print the nozzle itself with flexible materials for inflatable side actuators and the morphing central channel, and then rigid materials were used for the outer casing and the access ports. So we are now officially printing 3D printers with 3D printers. Thank you guys, very good, and I'm done. This is it, not really. We've got more stuff because we've got challenging titanium parts for the XB-1 aircraft, which are getting 3D printed on Velo 3D's Sapphire system. So the team over at Boom Supersonic chose Velo 3D for their next generation laser powder bed fusion technology to produce a number of printed titanium parts for the XB-1 aircraft tests. And there's a left and right version for most of those parts located in critical areas of the plane. Now, many of Boom's 3D printed parts are related to channeling air and certain complex veins, ducts, and louves. Now, some of the air being routed through these parts exceed 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So the geometric complexity of these parts required a surface-based design approach. The company has reported many relevant firsts and application cases using additive manufacturing, and it's definitely not stopping here. Uh, Velo 3D has some of the best 3D metal printer offerings and they keep pushing the envelope with their support free printing and new materials so definitely expect more like this in future episodes. Speaking of future episodes, definitely go subscribe so you don't miss any more of these and hitting that like and notification bell or sharing this video really does help us a lot and we love you for it. And that brings us right into the question of the week. Would you pay the premium of $200 or more for a custom 3D printed pair of shoes? It might be in the really near future, like you get your name on it or something, still from Adidas or Adidas or whatever. And uh, alternatively, have you printed anything for yourself that was wearable? Like, I don't, you know, there's many. I need to print a new button for this, it's broken. Just kidding. Anyway, here at Vision Miner, we specialize in functional 3D printing, especially high performance plastics like Peak and Ultim and a lots more. So if you're interested in using functional 3D prints and materials in your business, feel free to reach out and we can help you make the right choice for your application. We also got a print service. If you wanna give these materials a test, we can help you out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day and we'll see you on the next video.